All right, it's a brilliant afternoon again where we are having one of those uh, really very fantastic uh, moments with a senior colleague, a mentor, somebody we all respect in the animal health industry. Uh, somebody I, I believe quite a handful of us are lined up to listen to. Uh, and he's going to be talking about something really very special, something very interesting, and something that uh, we all want to hear, because for every one of us who are in the animal health industry, uh, one of the key people we attend to, or one of the key patients we attend to, are dogs and cats. And because it's becoming one of the mainstay of our practice, yeah. knowing the evolving trends in this kind of practice is one of the key important things we need to uh, learn. And today, we don't have a big fish, we have a whale in the house. <laughs> uh, so, those are people, when we were starting up our practice, we just usually hear their name. We hear of the likes of pet care, we hear a lot about fruit mouths, we hear Dr. Tunji Nasser. The masterclass today is bringing Dr. Tunji Nasser right into your space. <laughs> so you have an opportunity, you have a moment to directly interact with him and directly interact with his knowledge and his experience. People, audience, today, help me welcome Dr. Tinji Nasser. Dr. Tinji Nasser. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. Yeah, how are you, baby? How is everything? <laughs> Good, very well. So that's the CEO and the big master behind Truth Mart Animal Hospital. He's also the president of the Commonwealth uh, Veterinary Association. As I said, he's not a big fish, he's a whale in the house. So today we are all delighted to have you around. Say something to us, sir. <laughs> uh, well, Femi, I'm so delighted to be here. Uh, it's a space I had wanted to invade all this while, but I know you have your program and everything. And I think uh, there's no better time than now, like they say. Uh, I'm happy that uh, the pet industry that um, uh, we met, you know, has actually advanced uh, more than what we, we, when we started about 32 years ago, uh, started my practice 32 years ago, and I spent the first 14 years of that 32 years with Dr. Kunavelli of Pet Care Animal Hospital. So um, I, I, I am a bit grounded, I'm very grounded in what I do. And I believe that uh, the future vets uh, who are going to occupy this space are even better prepared than ourselves mm -hmm. because of the resources that uh, they have already with them. You know, so I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to share my knowledge. I'm delighted to do everything that will advance the course of this profession. At least, thank you very much. <clears throat> All right. So today we are. I, I, I know you have an entire presentation, but today we are talking about the nutrition for dogs or for pets yes. generally right you know well today I, I, we're going to be talking about dogs hmm. essentially because hmm. if you look at the profile of uh of what people bring to our do uh, to, our, to our various hospitals and clinics and all that i would say we receive uh close to about 97 98 percent of dogs uh two percent of cats in lagos but that is different from what is happening in Abuja and the northern parts of the country. It's almost about uh, maybe 70, 30 or 60, 40. Mm -hmm. And that is understandable, very explicable because of the fact that in the south, uh, we have a lot of Christians here and, uh, uh, and then the, uh, we have Muslims. Mm -hmm. But the Muslims do not actually uh, refer dogs as, uh, as cats. Mm -hmm. uh, the prophets Salallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, had a cat and then uh, because of that the Muslim families in the north tend to have a lot of cats mm -hmm. so you see uh, people in Abuja and practicing up north attending to so many cats than uh, some of us in the south here here uh, well dogs are considered a bit dirty in the Islamic faith but uh, in the north yes cats are very revered so the equation is not total and it's not uniform in the country in, in, in the north, we have more cats than, well, let me say I'm almost on an equal pedestal, but in, in the in the south here, yeah, it is much more 
dogs. So that's why I chose to be talking about dogs since this is space I'm uh, operating. It does not mean that uh, we will not be referring to cats when we need to refer to cats. And uh, let me let me just talk to, I mean, to, uh, to a punchline. Cats are not small dogs. Cats are individuals. <laughs> <laughs> cats are cats. Dogs are cats. Cats are cats. They are themselves. So they are not small dogs. So uh, when we need to talk about cats, we talk about cats. Yeah. All right. Fan fantastic. Uh, fantastic. So uh, maybe as a way of introducing, I know, as I said, you have your presentations up. We're going to be taking the next uh, 20 minutes, taking your presentation. Then we'll now start engaging. Are you okay with that? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Very well. try so to let, let's hear from you what dog nutritions are and then what it takes to really take care of a dog. Go ahead. You can share your screen, sir. Okay, we'll try to share our screen now. So we can start. Uh, but just before the, the screen share is uh, uh, actualized, uh, let me start to tell my audience that the nutrition of uh, dogs or the nutrition of pet animals at any point in time is the most important thing you want to talk, think about you know so uh, i will enjoy all of us to at least uh, try to listen very attentively um let me talk about the goals of pet nutrition, so to say. Uh, the goal of pet nutrition is to ensure a boost in the immune system and improve the health of the dog over a long period of time with less stress on the pet's organs. Uh, this is very important because um, the kidney, the liver, serves to eliminate toxins from the body. And uh, if you burden them, then you you make them tire out almost, you know, very soon than, than, than is required. Uh, that's why I will not recommend dog food that have a lot of dyes, a lot of preservatives, and a lot of all those kind of things because they tire out the kidney and the liver. And Another goal of pet nutrition is there shouldn't be much chemicals like I said, preservative diet, because this could put a burden on the kidney and the liver in an attempt to remove the toxins. Then proximate analysis should also be as reasonable as possible. What do we mean by proximate analysis? You know, the ideal diet should ordinarily contain carbohydrate, protein, fats and oil, vitamins and minerals fiber and the rest of it so they should be put together in a manner that will benefit your pet not that you put too much or too little of any one of them so like i said protein should be optimized and not excessive and should be fed according to the life stage of the dog i'm going to talk about life stage of the dog and peculiar requirements of dogs at every life stage if we have the time uh, ingredients that must be in the dog food must be bioavailable. There's no point for ingredients in dog food not to be bioavailable, not to just be as fillers, you know. But if you, if you look at most of the cheap dog food around these days, um, some, of the, some of the ingredients that they use in making them are not bioavailable uh, because uh, the goal is about commercial success, not at least the interest of your dog. Then apart from being bioavailable, there are the, the ingredients. The digestibility of the carbohydrate sources must also be ensured. So digestible pro, uh, proteins and uh, carbohydrates should be the sources of, I mean, of uh, uh, ingredients. Not that you just put anything to just be fillers and all that. So those are the very goals of uh, uh, feeding or nutrition in pets. Now, I want to talk something I'm, uh, about something I'm very passionate about, and that's about consultation on the veterinary table, consultation with your clients there. Initially, there's what we call the TPR, temperature, pulse, respiratory rate. The pulse, yes, sometimes you also include the heart rate to it. 
those are the things that oh when a dog comes or a pet comes to your table you want to you want to take the temperature you want to take the pulse and heart rate you want to take the respiratory rate before you commence your physical exams and then you do the all the other due diligence and all that but gradually two things have been introduced as one of the very things that you as a, a veterinarian must always assess when you see a pet on your table the fourth one that was introduced is pain assessment or pain perception in dogs and in cats there are there are there are there are resources to use to know that oh this dog is in pain or that dog or that cat is in pain especially in cats cats are even better uh, uh resourced than, than dogs in terms of pain assessment and perception you have the feline grimace scale that use perception and the appearance of the of the cat's uh, facial expression to determine whether that cat is in pain or not. You know, you look at the 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 uh, the, the ears how they are standing. You look at the whiskers. You look at the the eyes and every other thing. And then the way the door, I mean, the cat is like uh, uh, anchoring its stance below the shoulder, above the shoulder. So I mean those are those are things for another day. Anyway, I don't want to go into that now to uh, uh, distract us from this presentation. So the, la the the newest one that was introduced is nutritional assessment. So for a vet, you must at every point in time, at every consultation, temperature, pulse and heart rate, respiratory rate, pain assessment and perception. And then nutritional assessment. Nutritional assessment, how do you assess the nutritional state of a dog? By looking at that dog, by looking at you know the appearance of the dog. Are you able to see the ribs or not? Are you able to feel the ribs or not? Are you able to see visual fat? or not because when a dog is on the fed and the ribs are showing and everything you would know there is this famous talk you know that the dog will have by the side of its abdomen are you able to see it or you are just seeing a totally rounded dog you know a, an obese dog so all those kind of things the coat is the coat shining you know is it like lost your food you know so but is it dry you know, so those are the kind of things that you look at it, and then you will know that oh, this dog is not really, really being fed good nutrition or you know bad nutrition. Because some of the times when you see a lot of skin problem and everything, you already know. So virtually, so you have to do nutritional assessment and then have a conversation with the client. A conversation with the client is very very important because you need to know what they are feeding the dog. You know how they are feeding the dog where they are feeding the dog and everything the frequency of feeding you have to know and then if possible you let them you you tell them you want to see like what they are feeding the dog like if you want to see the label or something so that you know exactly that they are doing the right thing and if it's home food how are they doing it so these are the things that you have to know when you are doing nutritional assessment but i'll tell you it's a very long thing because you must have like a small like a sheet that you want to do your you're, you're marking like you're marking uh, one or two things they are doing or they are not doing so that you can actually at the end of the day you know uh, let them understand whether they are doing well or not now that leads me to something i call body condition scores because um it's 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 an assessment of the nutritional state of your dog it's an assessment so a body condition score is a number that is assigned to your pet based on the evaluation of facts at some very cute locations of the body and it ranges from one to nine it may not be just one two three four to nine but like that some of the skills will have one three five you know seven and nine like that and then one is a sign when your dog is severely underweight and nine when it is severely obese but the optimal condition is five uh the wasaba nutritional guideline as uh this diagram that will assist you 
in knowing the body condition dog, I mean, the body condition of your skull, rather, of your dog. Are you able to feel the ribs? dogs are well rounded that is when they think the dog is <laughs> is fine <laughs> whereas you're just killing that dog you're killing that dog so there's body condition score there's another one that's just been recently introduced muscle condition score but it's, it's beyond the scope of this lecture so but my main problem is let's talk about when we look at the body condition score of our dogs are they of best you know are they obese, you know, or are they underfed? Now, when your when your dog has excessive fat deposition, more than thirty percent of the ideal body weight, and fat are distributed in unlikely places, your dog is said to be obese. And how do you get an obese dog? It is only it is when you feed very high fat food, when you overfeed your dog, or when you practice free choice feeding. Uh, this is very, very uh, rampant in Lagos. A lot of people who will leave their house around 5 a.m. and are not back until 11. And then they like their dogs. What do they want to do? They just put the food there. Okay, eat when you want to. Free choice. So the guy will just have you know, unnecessary access to food because they don't have anybody who will feed us when the dog needs to feed. So it's free choice. So most of those kind of dogs are obese. Then what again do you feed your dog? I said I fat food. People will feed their dogs <laughs> noodles, waste noodles. It's another thing that we're going to, I'm, I don't want to discuss that today because it's a, it's a very emotional thing for a lot of people. A lot of our people are selling it and they think that if you're talking about it, you're like not really helping them. But for me, I want to tell you very sincerely that you have to look at what you are feeding. I, I do not approve noodles, and I and I make bold to say it. I do not approve noodles because of this kind of problem. So obesity comes with a lot of clinical consequences, which are beyond the scope of this lecture. But um, it's something that we all know, even in man and uh, animals alike. Obesity is not a thing to be proud of at all. Then, are you under feeding? Is the body condition score of your dog one or three? So it could mean that you are underfeeding. It could mean feeding of food deficient in nutrients. Either they are commercially prepared or they are domestically prepared. I've seen people who would just put gari in hot water. I've seen it several hot water and then had a bit of palm oil to eat. If they are able to help the dog, they have some fish stock or meat stock and they put it there. I've seen that before severally so it's results underfeeding will result in developmental arrest because the dogs will not simply grow because you are not supplying what they should have to grow especially young puppies that need a lot of protein um, modicum of carbohydrates fats and uh, all the nutrients that they need to grow they are not in that thing that you are preparing in your house they are going to have the metabolical issues because the macronutrients are also absent you know Micronutrients like zinc or skin uh, development and all that are also absent. So you see a lot of the dogs coming down with uh, dermatological problems and all that. The physiological anomalies, you know, they are, they are anemic. They are, all sorts of things are happening to them. The pets are generally unthrifty when you're under feeding. And then you wouldn't know that it's just, you just think that the dog is sick. And the dog is not sick. It's just because that you are not feeding properly. Then sometimes you feed properly, but you feed small quantity that are required. And it results in persistent hunger. And then that leads to even a greater problem, behavioral modification with consequent pickup. At that time, the dog is hungry. The dog wants to eat anything in sight, even if it's lylon or whatever, because it's hungry. And it starts picking all sorts of things. So you, because of the fact that you are not feeding the dog well, you are even modifying its behavior. Because he has to, he has, I mean, hunger, hunger has no friends. So the dog must eat at any point in time. So 
that's one of the consequences of underfeeding. Now, let's quickly go to the choice of food. And I want to be very fast now. Uh, are they commercially prepared? We, I, I looked at commercially prepared home cooking and then raw diet. In commercially prepared food, I think I prefer that one because you have guaranteed ingredient profile. You know, guaranteed in ingredient profile. Although, like I said, labeling instructions should be strictly adhered to. Because uh, sometimes, but this is not this is not foolproof as it were, because you have some cheap food or bagging food store brands that are not really very good for your dogs, one way or the other. They are not really very good for your dog. But you must know and you must open your eyes to choose a particular brand of dog food for your dog that you know, you know, has guaranteed ingredient profile, and not the ones that they change from batch to batch. In some other ones, the, 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 the ingredient profile changes from batch to batch of the food. So it's not seriously uh, re uh, regulated. Then home cooking. Yes, I'll tell you it's good, but I will not encourage it most of the time because of the fluctuating composition. And uh, because, you know, we, for example, I, I, do, I do what they call 4, 3, 2, 1 because of my state. Uh, four, that is 40% of my food normally is uh, vegetables, 30% protein, 20% carbohydrate, and 10% fats and oils, which we can get from some of those things. And that is what I look at my plate and see. This is what I want to see on my own plate, you know, and that's what I've been trying to do all this while. But because it's a dog, a lot of us do not pay close attention to that kind of something. It's just subject to the availability of what is available, I mean, in the house. So it is mostly subject to the whims of the owner and availability of food materials in the house. So it's not something that I encourage for optimal growth, especially for your puppies. Not adults may even be, I mean, they might just like, you know, get something out of that in, in a way, in a limited way. But puppies, no, 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 no. I'm not going to recommend it. Raw, I am not recommending raw meat uh, because raw meat alone cannot satisfy the nutritional needs of dogs. There has to be carbohydrate, there has to be other things, there has to be fiber, there has to be every other thing. So when you are telling me that you are feeding raw meat to your dog, I just wonder what you are doing to the kidney and the liver of that dog, you know, and then the disability, I mean, the, the event in, this, in, in the intestine and all that. Because you are not going to prepare what is seen in the wild that these dogs eat to make them uh, to be what we call them cannibals. And then in Nigeria, the way our meat is presented, already contaminated, you know, and then you want to give raw meat. No, 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 no. I mean, flies must have done their own thing on the on the on the pot. And then you put them, you put the meat in the freezer. It's not it's not fresh. And then uh, electricity will not allow it to be preserved very well and all that. So I do not I do not recommend raw meat for dogs. I fight it a, a bit some of my clients, you know, because of this all the time. But my, my stand is my stand. Then types of food, canned food, dry food, then is it is it dry food pelleted or extruded? Canned food are very nice, but they're very expensive. Normally I recommend those for small breeds of dogs because you know little of little quantity is required. And and if it's and that is if he has any other ingredient apart from meat, it must be because it must be balanced and complete. Don't just say, "Oh, it's it's a meat." I will tell you, "Oh, it's meat." Meat is meat alone cannot satisfy the nutritional requirement of your dog. So why should you just eat meat? I mean, why should your dog just eat meat? So, but if they tell me, "Oh, it contains grains, it contains uh, legumes, it contains um, fiber sources and all that," then I would say, "Good." But dry food are mostly recommended because they're mostly balanced and complete and they are prepared for a lot of things from meat uh, shredded meat chicken fish grains although some, some food have grain free nowadays we have legumes cereals corn gluten fruits vegetables and then preservative stabilizers and gelling agents so this is very nice but the dry meat food is it is it like pelleted or extruded? I tend to like extruded food more because they are cooked under very high temperatures, um, moisture and pressure. 
And then the, the, it, there's a consequent preservation of nutrients and uh, highly improved digestibility because of the high temperature that these things have been precooked, uh, especially of the starch and the protein. Well, pelleted foods are prepared under very low temperatures and they have high propensity to crumble. When they crumble, you lose them, they, 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 there's a loss of nutrients and they are mainly less available to the dog. You know, when a dog eats extruded food, the amount of fecal material is usually very small. You know, unlike when you eat pelleted food, when you see the fecal material very big and all that. So, so you see your dog will just uh, do the business somewhere and it's extremely very, 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 very big and all that. You wonder what the dog has gotten from the food itself. But with extruded food, the physical, the fecal material is usually very, very small. And that shows that they have gotten the nutrients very well. So and um, most of the Australian foods around are premium. You know, premium, they can be a bit expensive than your regular food, but it is because they have higher nutritional density. So you feed less to achieve, you know, the same result as against the cheap commercial alternative that you have around. And again, because they are premium, they have very stable ingredient profile as against the bargain brands whose composition can vary from batch to batch. Uh, I know a lot of premium foods. Maybe during the question and answer, we will be able to look at this. There are lots of premium foods. They come in not too many big weights. You know, you don't you don't see them in 20, you don't see them in 25 or even 30 kg. They come in 12.5 and 15, you know, because the nutritional density is very high. And your dog will eat them even. Uh, longer than a dog that is 25, a food that is 25 kg. I can tell you this. This is not something I'm saying. This is something I'm, it's something I've experienced. You know. So I uh, will soon finish the small presentation that we're doing now. I want to talk about the life stage feeding. At every point in time, your your the, the dog has a life stage, from being a puppy to an adult, and then apart from that. Some dogs are naturally very active. They are used for games, they are used for exercise. You know, some dogs are not usually very active. They are in the house and they are with you all the time. So they don't need enough, they don't need, they don't need much energy to expend. So you, we have to look at some of these issues before we can prescribe a particular kind of food for your dog. Well, let me just do puppies and adults on a broader level because uh, uh, these are the things we want to talk about. So why do puppy even need food? They eat to achieve healthy growth, you know, and it should not be too rapid or too slow. For example, you have a puppy and then you are just pumping the puppy with food, with food, with food. With food. Yeah, it needs that. But then you have to be moderate in your provision. It should not be too rapid or too slow to achieve a particular weight. You know, optimally people will say a puppy should gain at least between 600 grams and one kg per week one way or the other if you are very optimal in your feeding and not that otherwise so it shouldn't be too rapid or too slow in the provision of the of the food then what do they need they also need food to optimize immune function without without your dog having good nutrition how, how does it build immunity especially you know with, with their vulnerability to all these popular diseases of this temple parvovirus lepto and all that so you need to give them good food for them to be able to build their immune system very well then you have to minimize potential for obesity like i said don't feed them too much too rapid at any point in time then you have to also avoid developmental orthopedic, orthopedic diseases for example you have a puppy you don't even expose the puppy to sunlight it's always eating rice and meat and then it's always opened in the house of course, you are going to have a bull legged puppy. I can assure you of that. You know, and then the coats be so dry and all that. Then this is another contention that we all have to understand. Protein should be between 22 to 32%, you know, for puppy. You know, because they need it to build their tissues, you know, muscles and everything. They need they need protein at this stage. You know, it should not be, you know, but I see some food they are claiming 36, 38%. I think it's not too good. So the maximum you could want you want to do is about 22 to 32. Even at 25, it, it, it's it's fine. So it doesn't have to be 30 something before you say you're, you're giving protein to your dog. Then for large breed, 
for large breeds, puppies of large breeds, the calcium uh, uh, constituent of the food is very, very important. A lot important. Calcium is very, very important. And I must repeat again because of their big bones and everything. But like I said, it has to be moderation. It doesn't have to be rushed. Then, um, how do you feed your puppies? Uh, I would recommend that you feed your puppies when they are between six weeks to 12 weeks, four times, small portion, four times daily. Uh, when they are between three months to six months, three times daily. When they are between six months and 12 months, two times daily. When they should be changed to adult maintenance diet. Uh, some people will say adult dog is up to about 18 months. But nutritionally, we I think they adult they they they, they are, uh, attain adulthood at about 12 months. And then when you are changing from puppy to adult, it is has to be gradual. It's not something that oh you stop feeding puppy today, you know, and then you start adult tomorrow. No, 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 it's not done like that. So it has to be gradual over time, you know, 1090, 2080, 3070, 6040, 5050, until you achieve complete 100 percent of change. Otherwise, you are going to mess up the system of that dog. And the same rules apply when we are changing uh, dog food from one to another one to the other. So, like I said, I won't say much about adults. Adults, you feed them once or twice daily, and then you make sure you follow the labeling instruction, and on, on, I mean the feeding instruction on the labels. If you are, you are dealing with very uh, pious uh, uh, manufacturers, some of the manufacturers are not, are not good. Then for adult group, uh, dog food, protein should be between 18 and 25%, not more because of the impact on the liver and the kidney. Uh, that, that, that's why it, it beats me now when people want to buy dog food, they're asking you for the protein content. And when you tell them it's uh, like 24 or 25 or 26, they say, no, 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 we cannot buy this. We have to give, uh, I mean, that's the dog food that is 32 or 36. For God's sake. You are burdening the liver and the kidney of these dogs. It's not going to do them any any, any good. It's going to arm them more, you know. So those who have done the research and have told you that protein for adult dogs should be eighteen and between eighteen and twenty five are not fools. So, but because our people look at they, they look the 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 perception of protein, protein, protein. If it's about 30, 40, they think they are doing that. No, you are killing that dogs, you know. You are killing that dogs. Small, small. Oh, well, uh, so I cannot see him. Uh, I guess he will be up shortly, probably some internet connection uh, issues. Uh, but he will, be, he, will, he will be back up. All right, so while we are still expecting him, uh, as I said initially, Dr. Tunjinasri is one of those big uh, top shot uh, 
veterinarian we have in the country uh, making us proud. He's talking about nutrition currently. And one of the key issues that I know he's coming back to discuss is the fact that he said we should not be giving our dogs noodles. <laughs> the noodles waste, you know, and into the practice. I mean, of course, so if you give dog noodles, can you just say I? You can just comment on the chat box that I recommend noodle waste to dogs. Can I see? Because I, I know quite a handful of us do that. I do that in my own practice. And then I know that dog noodles is one of those fast selling products uh, that we have, uh, we have around. And of course, uh, because it's cheap, and sometimes uh, the, the, the owner of the dog feels like they are achieving a similar goal and saving resources, most of them go for those dog noodles. Uh, but again, Dr. Uh, Tunjina Sura has invariably said that dog noodles are not things uh, we need to consider. I'm eager to ask him why. I know he will be back up shortly, probably when he is back. We are able to take his ideas and then ask him questions around why dog noodles are not uh, appropriate. Uh, before he comes back, I believe you try to reconnect. If you're part of, oh, I see her. Yes, I know. We are all doing good. <laughs> so let me bring up a comment to the, to the, to, uh, Judy Plus say, I recommend noodles to only adult dogs. Well, uh, yes, that's from uh, Judy. Uh, you recommend noodles to only adult dogs. We can, we can see that. Uh, but Dr. Tsinjina Zero will be back up to tell us if it's something that is appropriate or not. I see Dr. Uda Abdullahi also saying that she recommends uh, uh, noodles. We all, most of us, maybe 60, 70 percent, I will not say all of us, uh, recommend noodles. Okay, so I see another comment uh, from uh, Damilola. Uh, Damilola said, I, I recommend dog noodles. Do you recommend? You also sell dog noodles, right? I'm eager for Dr. Tunji Nasiri to come back up so that uh, we can deal with the issue. But before he comes back up, if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I think uh, uh, you will miss uh, a, a lot of chances in listening to valuable lessons like this, where we bring in experts, people who have been in the industry. Dr. Tunji Nasiri said he has been in the industry for over 30 years, and they are sharing with us their experience within an hour what we can do and how we can do what we can do. Uh, so and uh, if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I think it's a perfect time to get that done. If you've not given Dr. Tunji Nasri a good thumb up, I want you to do that right away, uh, especially because of uh, the information he's sharing. I think they are all valuable information that all of us uh, needs, to, uh, needs, to, uh, needs to learn from. All right, uh, so I want to bring up Dr. I just saw a comment by Dr. Uh, Ghani. Uh, there's actually nothing like dog noodles. They are waste from human noodles, factories with a lot of contamination, contaminants that lead to serious digestive issues in dogs. It is a no-no in my practice. It is a no-no in my practice. <laughs> uh, Dr. Ghani, I'll be sending you a link uh, to this presentation and I want you to dial in. Let's hear you make a comment around this. Uh, I think Dr. Uh, Dr. Tunji is still having an issue with his network, but I'll be sending you the link directly to join this uh, uh, YouTube live. Uh, because again, for you to say dog noodles is a no-no, that's very strange to some of us. Some of us, uh, <laughs> especially some of us that are practitioners, we do this a lot of the time, and then we also don't think there's anything wrong with doing this. First of all, we think it's cheaper for our clients. And if you're saying it's a no-no, uh, Dr. Ghani, I've sent you the link. Uh, if you have a moment, kindly just click on the link and let's have you on board while we wait for Dr. Tunji Nasir. I want to bring up another comment again. Mm. Uh, this comment is by Francisca. Uh, Francisca said, I don't sell noodles, but it's easily accessible for clients, especially as kibbles are now very cheap. So again, as I said, 
uh, noodles are available, they are almost always available for clients to buy. And sometimes there are a few things we also do. We also do, uh, okay, there are a few things we also do to ensure that uh, some of these clients can have, can have, uh, all right, Dr. Sinjinasi is joining, I, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad he's back up. But Dr. Gani, you can also join, just a moment, let me bring up Dr. Tunji back. We, we missed you, sir. Uh, you are back live. We missed you. <laughs> I guess it was uh, some internet connectivity. Dr. Sinjina said. Really? Yes. You, you, at you, what point did you miss me? Okay, so we got to miss you at uh, uh, like about five minutes ago. Really? Yes. We got what point was I? Uh, so you were still sharing your slide. Uh, but you're yes, done with the slide. Was I. Mm. So again, I could uh, go back. I, I stopped sharing because I didn't, I didn't know that you were not, I didn't know that you were not uh, uh, with me. Okay, so you're, 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 you're sharing the slides now. Yes, you, you went off. Uh, you went off. But again, let's take a few, a few uh, feedbacks uh, and a few questions uh, from your presentation. Or you could go back to the second to the last uh, slides that you were sharing. Uh, let's have uh, like a view. Uh, you can go back to sharing your slides, sir. Can you go, go back to sharing your slides? Okay, we'll, we'll share the slides again so we can talk over. Okay, so that we can have your last two, three slides, uh, and then. Uh, I want to. Oh, he's off again. All right, so. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Gary, <laughs> you're live. Thank yeah. you. For, thank you for coming in. Uh, very handy. I think there's an issue with uh, Dr. Tunji Nasser's network. But you said no, this is a no-no in your practice. Yeah, the, the, the truth. Go ahead, sir. I don't know if I'm on. Yes, yes you're, you're on. You're, you're, you're on, sir. Okay. You're, you're uh, live. If you have seen me. Yeah. Obviously, I your life, sir. Okay. Absolutely. I've had to troubleshoot a lot of. Uh, yeah, I've had to troubleshoot a lot. Okay. I have had to troubleshoot a lot of uh, um, dietary disorders in dogs because of. Uh, the use of no dues after after history taking. I'm already talking. I don't know whether I'm. Yes, yes, you're live. We can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So, like I said, I have long discouraged my clients from using that because um, my my findings is that what they call dog no dues. It's actually the waste that they gather together as offcuts from uh, the factories. Okay. We can hear you. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> yeah. So they are they what what they sell or what they market as dog noodles is actually what the factory workers sweep off as waste from human production mm -hmm. in the factories. Mm -hmm. Of course, with a lot of uh, contaminants, like I said. And then they just, bag, they just bag this thing and sell it out like, oh no, that's interference. I don't... Mm -hmm. Looks like we, we we have quite a lot of issues with network uh, today. 
so uh, somebody say I strongly let me bring up uh, the comment. Uh, let me bring up the comment uh, from one of us. He said, I strongly agree with Dr. Enahoro. Once I had even suspected a tumor case to be linked to it, I perceive they are highly contaminated. Uh, so, uh, but again, so what do we do? How do, where do we go from here? Having uh, to see, okay, Dr. Gani is coming back up, uh, and Dr. Tunji Nasser is also uh, back up. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Dr. Tunji Nasser. Yes, I'm here. Yes. All right. Me now. Okay, so uh, your backup, something went uh, wrong with your network, but we're glad you're back up. Uh, so we're talking about dumb noodles. And uh, Dr. Gadi yes. suggested that, uh, uh, you know, you suggested initially in your presentation that it's a no no. And then, of course, we, uh, we have a few comments coming here and there saying that dumb noodles could also be very dangerous. Uh, but it's a booming industry. Like it's a booming industry. Dog noodles are uh, they sell. Sometimes they even have enough to sell. <laughs> As you're offloading mm -hmm. one five tons of dog noodles. Currently <laughs> dog noodles are scarce. <laughs> so how can something be that bad and it's selling that much? It's a reflection of the poverty in our society is a reflection of the stage in the rung of the ladder that we place our pets. Mm. It's a reflection of the mentality of the average Nigerian pet owner mm. who does not think his dog or his pet deserves the best mm. other than roughages and uh, discarded material from some factories somewhere. I don't, I don't know whether you have actually examined noodles you will see all sorts of things in that in that thing. All sorts of things. Because hopefully they are factory rejected. There are things that people pack you know, from the floor of factory, they are factory waste. Mm -hmm. You know? And then people think that, oh, because they are noodles. When you want to eat your own noodles, you put vegetables, you put eggs. You understand? But you don't put all those things for the dogs. You just cook the noodles and then and noodles are bleached with uh, wheat. You just cook the noodles and put palm oil. And that's all they give. If I may interrupt you, sometimes we add, uh, I, I'm saying we, because I'm also a corporate. <laughs> okay, yeah, right, right. Yeah, we, we sell dog noodles, uh, but maybe after this master class, uh, because you know, it's jet washing, we might consider stopping. We, I'm not saying we are stopping, but we might consider it. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, so we, sometimes we add meat. Dry meat, where I dry fish. You don't think those uh, those uh, those are proper? You, you know, I, I said something about proximate analysis. I said something about balanced and complete dog food. You understand? Those are the things you do with your whims. What you just you just estimate. You don't. You are not even sure whether you are putting your the, the protein content is low or too high, mm. or whether the fat content is high or too low. And in order to just eliminate all this problem, that is why we say, why don't you just do a dog food? Mm. I mean, a commercially prepared dog food. Mm. The issue of noodles is something that is, very, like I said, is very, very emotional. Mm. Yes, I, I said dry meat. Mm. I, I bring dry meat into the country, and noodles promotes the sales of my dry meat. Mm. But then that does not mean that I should not point out the clinical dangers, you know, the consequences, clinical consequences of feeding just noodles. Mm. Noodles that see, if, when I see a noodle, a, a noodle dog, I know, I know them. They are fat. <laughs> You don't have any abdominal force. You understand? And the problem is that they die very early too. Because as you are seeing that fat inside, so you are, you are seeing all the, the fat is also being deposited in all the organs of, of the body. So, and it is so dirty. Noodles are very dirty things to feed your dog. People don't even sieve to remove all the impurities out of it. Some people will tell me, no, no, no. There are some that are very nice from the factory and everything. No. I, I have not seen a very nice one. Mm -hmm. And it's not just good to just continue to do that to our, to our pets. Mm -hmm. These dogs, I mean, for example, you, are, you have a dog, you have a dog that you have bought for so much amount of tens of thousands of, uh, of naira, and then you cannot give 
it, it cannot give a good food to that dog. Why? Why are you behaving like that? Mm. Eh? Dogs that will need an adequate amount of uh, nutrients, especially for cows and for large breed dogs and everything. They will not say eh, they are giving they are giving cows on supplement, trying to play God, trying to play dog food manufacturer and everything. So I think it is better for the dogs mm. for their survivability. That is why you see an average owned Nigerian dog. Mm. An association is supposed to live for like eight to ten years, mm. uh, the same thing as Bobo, mm. and then uh, and then uh, and the Rottweilers and the rest of them. But when did they die? By the time they are four years, three years, four years, five years, they are dead. Mm. And people start looking at what is the problem? What is the problem? You understand? So for me, for me, the the, the most important thing in in pet keeping as a responsible pet owner mm. is to make sure that the the what do i call it to make sure that the nutrition of your of your dog is excellent mm -hmm. if you have if you solve the problem of nutrition honestly even vets will not eat because mm -hmm. we have solved about 80 percent of the problem mm -hmm. you know but we don't that is what we are and we're even lacking in that mm -hmm. all right so let's pick this question uh, from ben david akuve he said please sir why is meat not good food not good food enough for your dog. I also want to ask what the dog in the wild, wolf, fox, jackal feed on. So, why you you are talking about raw meat and you said raw meats are not really yeah, advisable? Yeah, mm, so yeah. Why? See, in the wild, in the wild, Makufa is not here to support me. Eh? But let me tell you, in the wild, apart from feeding, apart from the dogs or whatever, all the dogs or the omnibus eating the raw meat. Do you know what they do? They also solve the stomach content of the of their prey, right? They solve the stomach content of their prey, and then you know what is the stomach content? You know, when they eat, they, they probably the prey, the most of their prey are herbivores. You know, they solve the stomach content of their prey, and in that stomach content, you have a lot of vegetables, you have a lot of vitamins and minerals. Mm. But in your own diet, you are trying to practice restricted raw meat. It's just raw meat. You are not giving in any other thing you know so we are not exactly mimicking the conditions of the world you are not mimicking it and at the end of the day what are you subjected yeah, is you're subjecting your your, your your doctor deficiency in nutrition mm -hmm. you know deficiency in nutrition and again even if we do our own meat i said it during the presentation you go to the abateur now you see flies all over the meat mm -hmm. you know all over the meat and then you don't even wash well. Sometimes you preserve in freezers, and then by the time you know it, the mm -hmm. past taking light, the, 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 the meat is getting spoiled and everything. And then you are saying you are feeding that to your dog. Mm -hmm. you, are, you, are, you, are, you are predisposing your dog to problems. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why I will not advise, and I will continue to fight those who are saying they are feeding raw meat. Mm -hmm. You know? Because it's not complete as it were, as the dogs in the wild will, 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 will eat it. You know, and then the way the meats are preserved here, you know, before you present it to your dog, no. All right, so let's let's take this final question. Uh, you said, what's your opinion about father rice? Yes, there's a popular dog rice also. <laughs> dog rice, really? Dog rice is also, a, you know. Uh, let me bring myself up again, <laughs> just a moment, so that everybody can see me laugh. <laughs> so. Dog rice is also a booming industry. Like, like you can buy tons and tons of dog rice, especially when there are no noodles. There's a special kind of dog rice that we, we people buy. What's, what's your opinion about dog rice? I think it's I still think, the I same. I've seen that rice before. It's a bit burnt like this. The, the one, the one that uh, somebody brought to our practice is a bit burnt and everything. And I think is uh, for me, for me. I would uh, I would still look at that dog rice as are you able to feed that dog rice, making sure that you had other things to eat. Mm. Well, the rice is a source is a is a carbohydrate source. Mm. What is your protein source? Mm. What is your vegetable uh, 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 source? Mm. You know what is your vitamin source? Mm. The facts and all what is the source because i see a lot of people just giving that dog rice and then they had a sprinkle of uh cow food to eat like i know some people mm. do yes yes you know, we mix it, it we mix it with cow food how many of the cow food would you want to miss to satisfy the nutritional requirement of that dog 
you know so i just think see what would be our, our our tendencies in nigeria are just like reflections of you know the society it's not it's not it's, it, nigeria is what is is a poor country as far as i'm concerned and then like i also said initially when i was starting is the placement is is is, is, is at that, at what, at, at that, at that the wrong of the ladder you know dogs are the, are, the, are, the, are the latest i mean the base of the ladder you know so we do not think that important things are supposed to be done to them that is what i feel honestly that is what i feel and it's just that if we can elevate our pets to a level that uh, will be better than what we are doing now i think we will we, we, we not, we not see any problems you know giving them good food mm. and that is what the commercial uh, dog food are, are here to solve because mm. these things are there already they are there already you don't have to like guesstimate or guess what you have to feed i'm not saying occasionally because of the kind of condition we have found ourselves you should not be able to do that but are you able at any point in time to have enough meat or fish mm. or enough vegetables you know for that food that you are preparing mm. Oh, oh, oh. No, it's a question that is answered. Mm. Yes. Mm. All right. Uh, so we are unfortunately we are running out of time. Dr. Ghani is also in the room, but before we bring him up, uh, just a few moments. So this segment is sponsored by Denka Dog Food. We got a word from the manufacturer that you are the only expert on Denka Dog Food in the country. <laughs> so what do you think? Why should we abandon other brands and focus on ensuring that dogs eat only Denka? Please go ahead, sir. Okay, let, 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 let me just do this in, 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 in a few seconds. The Denka dog food mm. is uh, a premium food. Mm. It's, it's, if you go to the entire EU space, it's the best food in the, in the EU. And that is why we we have been we have been we have been doing dog food. I mean, Denka dog food now for the past fifteen years, and it's a, a highly extruded food, highly extruded. And when I, you know, I was talking about extrusion the other time. Mm -hmm. These are food cooked in high moisture temperatures and uh, pressure, and with preservation of their essential ingredients in place. You know, the micronutrients are in place. And then they are highly digestible. That is why when a dog eats denka, you know, the feces is very small because the, the, the dog utilizes a, almost entirely everything it has eaten, you know. And then <laughs> denka comes in 12.5 kg. I tell you that 12.5 kg is almost like 30 kg of the regular type of dog food that you have in the market. Mm -hmm. Because when you are feeding six bowls or six cups of the other regular bagging dog food you're only feeding like two and a half cups of denka mm -hmm. so anybody buying a 12.5 kg is as it's like you are buying 30 kg because the, 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 the dog is going to get the same benefit so we are we are there we are out we are proud to brandish denka mm -hmm. denka dog to any to any enthusiastic dog owner at any point in time and that is why we are we are doing this to make people to be aware you know, just go to the Dubai Denka and look at the feeding instructions, you know, of Denka. You will see that. A, let me tell you something before we, we, we probably leave this one. A 10 kg dog, especially if you have all those sausage dogs, a 10 kg dog will eat 12.5 kg bag of Denka for three months. You need to say that again. Say that again, sir. A 10 kg dog, mm. when you have all these lassas, all these mm. lassa so mm. all these uh, toy breeds, mm. you know, a typical 10 kg, you know, most of the time they are not even up to 10 kg, they are actually between 7 and 8 kg. Mm. But a 10 kg dog will, will eat denka, denka dog food for more than three months. Mm. Can you beat that? Mm. More than three months. So when you buy a dog, a, a bag of denka, we just tell you, just go pour it into a plastic cover it, let it be stored well, and then feed according to the feeding instruction seen on the bag of the dog. Don't look at it. Like I said, look at your dog. Don't look at the dish. You look at the body condition of your dog, not the amount eating left in the plate or eating. So those are the kinds of things that we guide you. So we're very proud to say that this is something that is so economical, especially it's even good for Nigeria at this time, our economy at this time. 
Because with just a little bit of the food, your dog is the satiety is ensured. Mm -hmm. All, all, all right, so that's uh, about Denka. Somebody was asking, is asking a question, but I'm not sure if I want to answer us to answer the question because that will be talking of another brand. It was like, what's your view about Royal Canin dog uh, compared with Denka dog food? But again, uh, I, I, I think no, you no, can no, just... No, no, don't, don't, let, don't, let, don't let us dodge it. Don't okay, so, 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 so go ahead. I, I, I like being plain. I like being plain. Mm. Royal Canin dog food is also good, mm. you know, it's, it's good, mm. it's good, and it, it's for those who, who like Royal Canin dog food, it's fine. Royal Canin is very good, you know, but I, I'll say my Denka dog food or Denka dog food is even better. Mm. But Royal Canin dog food, fantastic. <laughs> you, you are not a marketer, sir. So, uh, someone is asking, does it have kibbles too? The Denka dog. Yes. yes so what okay. sizes does it have kibbles? What sizes does it come in? Uh, well, and then well, the well, he, has, he, has two he has two types that is being marketed in Nigeria now. We have the one for the adult, mm. which has uh, a, a bigger kind of kibble, and then the one for puppies, smaller kibbles. Those ones are very, 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 very small. You know, for you know, for the puppies to be able to pick and everything. And we encourage that you, you, you feed them. I mean, you feel it dry like that. It's, it's, although he also has prescription diet, which we're not marketing in Nigeria at the moment. Mm -hmm. He has prescription diet like you will see in everything for base dog, for that's what it's not used for skin. Then another another important thing is that our adult food, our adult food is so good for skin problems. You know, you can use it as a normal food. You can use it to use as an adjunct to skin problems. You know, we call it Dharma Protect. Dharma Protect Superior Crop, you know. So it's it's so so nice. So any dog that has any skin problem, any skin issue that you don't even know how to resolve, take adult denka. It's always very good. Yes. Ah, but Tunji, that's uh, the only expert uh, in the uh, denka dog food nationwide. Uh, I think uh, denka dog food should sell nationally after your broadcast. So three of us are on the screen. So we brought in Dr. Ghani when you were offline and we were trying to wonder what to do. And then we had to cut uh, Dr. Ghani off. Uh, afternoon, uh, Dr. Ghani. Uh, okay, you're muted. Okay, we can hear you now. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. So you were saying something about the news when we cut you off. Yes, let me join Tunji in saying that Denka dog food is fantastic. Whoa. And, uh, I bought uh, uh, several from him in the past before we suddenly couldn't uh, have access to it for a long time now. Mm -hmm. So if he's back, I join in promoting the Denka dog food. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to say earlier on when Tunji was off this scene, that there is nothing like uh, dog noodles. What people repackage and label as dog noodles are the off cuts, those rough edges that are off the standard from the factories that manufacture noodles meant for human beings. And I know that uh, some people also go to uh, these dairy industries where they produce uh, powdered milk and then they also get uh, all those that fell off the line they get them swept and then they pay those uh, cleaners back them and also recycle them for dog this is bad because a Very lot bad. of contamination i've had to initially when um, it, those dogs that were being fed with uh, that kind of noodles were being presented here with diarrhea. We couldn't trace the origin of the diarrhea until uh, adequate history revealed that uh, they were users of those uh, kind of <laughs> meal. Yes. So, like I said, it is a no-no. Most um, None of my clients go on it again, unless if they secretly do it and they will pay for it when they bring the dogs again for treatment. 
So I think we need to be very careful here because it is cheap mm. to sell. Um, but the consequences are dire mm. to those dog owners mm. and to the dogs themselves. Mm. So that's mm -hmm. the way, that's why I said we don't go for it at all. And then, of course, we don't market it. And then we don't encourage people to 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 use it in our practice. Mm. <laughs> 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 but no, this is this is a tough call for all of us in the trading industry. But <laughs> you, the, truth, you, the, truth, the, truth, the truth is bitter. Uh, this, 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 is, bitter. this is no, 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 no. You will not also see pet care marketing it. Because we know we have no, seen a lot no, of no, issues no. with this before. <laughs> this, this is not just bitter, sir. <laughs> this is heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have a out there marketing dog notice, you heard from two most respected uh, veterinarians in the country saying it's a no no. Uh, it's a no no. Uh, we will think about it. <laughs> we will take action. <laughs> <laughs> we will take uh, action. It's been, it's been an interesting masterclass today. Honestly, I enjoyed it. <clears throat> and one of the takeaway issues is that your dog is about what he feeds on. So if you have a good feeding practice, Dr. Tinjina Sura has stressed that if you have good feeding practice, then you should be on your way to heavy success in your practice. And then, of course, dog noodles, raw meats are a no-no. Then both professionals have also encouraged and stamped Denka dog food. So if you want it nationwide, there are numbers in the comment button that you can click, and then, of course, order some quantity. So, Dr. Tunjina, sir, any final word? But please don't talk about dog noodles again. Maybe something else. Maybe, <laughs> <What? laughs> Maybe something else. <laughs> if you want to be, like I said, if you want to be a responsible pet owner, uh, you just have to take care of the nutrition of your dog. You have to take it. You know, the nutrition of your dog is so, so important. You know, I see this as some something you can do to even prevent you from coming to the vet all the time. But I don't mind it anyway if I see you all the time because mm -hmm. it's more money for me, mm -hmm. you know. But just do the utmost, mm -hmm. you know, so that that dog will fulfill its purpose in your environment. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. So, Dr. Gani, any final word <laughs> since you are... Yeah, well, just to person. thank you for this platform. Uh, uh, very quite educative uh, and then um, our colleagues uh, should take uh, what, what our views are very seriously every client should not be seen as a meal we shouldn't just think uh, of what comes into our pocket through marketing alone we should also think about the welfare of the dogs thank you thank you so very much and to all our audience we want to most heartily thank uh, Dr. Tunji Nasser for this amazing uh, class on dog nutrition. I think we all learned a lot, despite uh, some of the bitter pills in this class. <laughs> we, all, we all learned a lot. And then those takeaway, somebody is already asking, we should share your presentation. I have it. I'll just say hi to uh, our number. Family app number will be able to share with you uh, the presentation. To everyone, Thank you for sparing your time. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, we have gone way past a thousand subscribers. We want to thank you if you've subscribed already. And if you've not, it's a good time to do that again. And if you've not given Dr. Tunji Nasri a thumb up, I think it's a perfect time to do that. Up until Thursday, we will see you shortly. Keep uh, promoting the healthy and professional way of attending to your pets and let's keep the community growing together. And then to Dr. Ghani, thank you for coming in at a very important time when network was an issue. Dr. Tunji Nasser, we all thank see you, you and then Crawford uh, up uh, growing, being progressive, and then seeing that the community is growing together with your professionalism. Thank you, and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, thank Bye. you for having me. Thank you.